Whenever a new camera body is released, all sorts of YouTube channels and review websites take the opportunity to compare the new product with previous cameras. When doing so, they look at all the specs, they shoot photos of test charts and some of them even take the cameras into extreme situations, all just to find out where each camera excels and, of course, where their limitations are. However, when it comes to the photo editing side of things, we don't seem to apply the same scrutiny towards the photo editing software. Everybody just uses Lightroom and nobody really seems to question that. So in this video, I hope to start a discussion and see if Lightroom really is the only viable option or if there are some alternatives out there that can outperform Lightroom or might outperform Lightroom in the near future. The competition we are going to look at today is Capture One, Luminar 3, On One Photo Raw 2019 and the completely free program Darktable. In order to figure out how much information each program can actually recover, we look at this forest scene that features clipped highlights in the sky and on the leaves, as well as crushed blacks by the trunks. Loading the image here in Capture One, Lightroom or Luminar gives us nice contrast and vibrant colors right away. Darktable then slightly reduces the color vibrancy and then On One Photo Raw gives us an even more washed out look, mind you, this is before we even touched any of the sliders, by also reducing the contrast and giving us an overall brighter image. When we actually start to reduce the exposure, once again, Lightroom, Capture One and Lumina produce very similar results by nicely rolling off the highlights and creating a convincing light blue color for the sky. Darktable and On One on the other hand produce a very noticeable purple tint instead. For the next comparison, we aim for a more realistic exposure change, where we recover as many highlights as possible and also lift the harsh shadows. To achieve this, we'll again use the exposure, but also make use of the highlights and shadow sliders to see if we can get better results with these designated recovery tools. Taking a first glance at these results already shows that the initial differences not only remain, but are extended on for the most part. Lightroom creates rich and vibrant colors, whereas Capture One sticks more true to life. On One is even more washed out than before, and we have similar but not as severe issues in Darktable. And once again, Lumina manages to stick remarkably close to the pros. Now let's zoom in for a closer look, starting off with Lightroom Classic. As we would expect, the highlights are nicely handled without any color tint. However, things get quite interesting if we compare these results with Lightroom CC, as I was not expecting such drastic differences between these two Lightroom versions. In Lightroom Classic, the highlight slider looks and feels more like adjusting a levels tools, and thus only affects areas that are actually blown out or very close to it. Lightroom CC on the other hand manages to recover much more information, but also affects areas that are not quite so close to clipping. When we do push the highlights and shadow sliders to the extremes, as we did here, we also seem to affect the clarity and hazing, creating soft glows and mushy colors. And while it is weird that Lightroom CC does these adjustments behind the scenes without us knowing, I actually kind of like them in this image and they could also be corrected for. Capture One's highlight recovery can also convince up close. It keeps colors natural, whereas Lightroom automatically increased the vibrance and richness of the colors, which gives us punchier images that are less true to life. Darktable holds up remarkably well for a free program and keeps most of the saturation colors. Using the proper highlight recovery tools also eliminated the color tint from the highlights. However, this does require us to work with additional sliders to adjust the white point of the image. On One literally pales in comparison to even the free program. The image seems very washed out and almost drained of colors, and unfortunately, even the color tint remains in the highlights. And even if I keep editing the image, as I did in this example, I had a hard time creating vibrant and rich colors in On One. On the other hand, Illumina 3 once again manages to stick remarkably close to Capture One and creates faithful color reproduction. To see how each of a program handles noise, I picked this heavily underexposed image. I then raised the exposure to similar levels in each program, but only applied very minimal or no noise reduction to avoid blurring the image and also to see how each program natively handles the noise. All programs except of Lightroom show significant color and luminance noise also in the dark parts of the image. And somehow Lightroom is able to detect which aspects of the image should stay complete black 
and removes all noise from that area, giving us a nice solid black mountain range. Capture One and Lumina nicely manage to separate the sky from the mountain range, while On One and Darktable struggle to do so, kind of blending the two together. Looking at the light streaks on the water, once again Lightroom manages to detect which aspects should stay solid black, while all other programs introduce some faded colors, some brighter colors in between the dark and the bright regions. While the other programs create very distracting noise patterns, once again Lightroom excels by instead creating an almost artistic noise pattern instead, and at the same time also removing old color tint from the fading regions without any of the distracting blue or purple tints we see in the other editors. These are all the tests I managed to run in the short trial period ahead with each program. Now I would like to discuss some of the things I liked and didn't like with each program, starting off with On One. On One's user interface takes a lot of inspiration from Lightroom, which makes it intuitive to use for both professionals and new users alike. While it manages to provide all necessary functionalities somehow, many UI elements still feel like placeholders that should really be refined. For example, why can I not use my mouse wheel to fine-tune slider adjustments? Or why can I not remove points from a simple curve tool? This is a feature people have been complaining for years now and they haven't managed to provide a simple fix for that. On the other hand, they did manage to create the best local adjustments out of all the tested programs and overall it was an enjoyable editing experience that I could see myself using. The performance during the basic edits is also close enough to Lightroom or Capture One that at least for a hobbyist like me it would be sufficiently fast. Unfortunately, some adjustments and modules still come with an unbearingly long loading screen and this makes the program feel unfinished and definitely takes away from an otherwise professional feel. All the previous issues are annoying, but they could be tolerated. What really stops me from switching to On One is the quality of the adjustments. As we saw earlier, they tend to wash out the image and to make matters worse, the sliders don't seem to be as effective as in other programs. I'm sure you could get better results somehow, but you would be adjusting to the shortcomings of this program rather than the program providing you with the expressive freedom you want. And honestly, even if it's cheaper than Lightroom, I cannot use or recommend a program that can't even handle highlights without introducing a tint. I mean, this is a feature even a free open source program does better. So they could just copy the code and use it in their own project and they would get better results. But there is hope. They seem to be aware of these issues as they mention them in their roadmap for their upcoming release. Unfortunately, the new beta version that was just released still exhibits the same purple tint and other problems that we discussed here. Lumia 3 is kind of the polar opposite to On One. It excels in the quality of their adjustments but it lacks in stability, performance and it's also missing some basic features. Let's start with the biggest problem. Stability in this program is so bad that I nearly removed it completely from this comparison. It was constantly crashing while I was trying to make the comparisons and I just couldn't believe that we were actually selling the software. I couldn't even edit a single image, let alone a whole shoot with it. So I tried to figure out if there was a problem with my machine. But as it turns out, there are tons and tons of form entries complaining about both the performance and of course the stability of the program. So if you are interested in the software, you should really download the test version and see if it's running at all on your machine. Of course, with every other customer shouting at the face, they must be aware of this issue, but they seem unable to fix it as Lumina 3 has already received three or four stability updates over the last year or so. And this is the version that I tested. And even in the rare occurrences that the program does run, the preview image does feel a lot more sluggish compared to On One or let alone Lightroom. Further, they lack most image management features. So you cannot assign keywords to images or filter them by location. This means if you want to sort your image, you're almost required to use additional software like Photo Mechanic. On the other hand, the quality of the adjustment was remarkable and very close to Capture One and Lightroom. And also the sliders were as expressive as in Lightroom, giving you a great editing experience. Unfortunately, there were also some usability quirks that annoyed me in the short time I was able to spend with the program. For example, when you create mask, you always have to press the done button instead of just pressing the enter key or clicking somewhere else. Also copying masks to different modules and applying the same mask to, let's say, exposure and color adjustments is very tedious. And while unlike stability, this wouldn't be a deal breaker for me, 
it is definitely an area where they need to improve and catch up to their competition. I really hope that they do manage to fix the stability issues in their upcoming Lumina 4, but they seem to be more focused on creating new marketable features like face AI or sky replacement, so I wouldn't hold my breath for any major stability improvements. But I would love to be proven wrong on this one. Darktable is maintained, developed and released by some computer vision nerds in their free time. And if you want to be able to use it, you better aim to become one yourself as they made sure that each module is as complex as possible. For example, unlike the other programs that give you a simple highlight and shadow slider, the module that achieves the same functionality in Darktable comes with a bunch of additional sliders. Of course, this does give you additional control, in this case over the white point, the highlight softening type, the highlight softening strength, the shadow color adjustment and the highlight color adjustment. But honestly, I just want more details in my highlights and not really worry about the white point. This should be automatically done and I just want decent results. And while you might accept it in this specific example, this is true for almost every module in Darktable. They offer you so much control that you need to be very experienced and work with many more parameters than in any of the other programs. Perhaps the most complex and over-engineered solution is the masking tool. Instead of using rasterized masks, as literally any other program, they chose to use vectorized brush strokes instead. This theoretically allows you to share each and every brush stroke with other modules, a feature nobody has ever requested or needed. Creating, maintaining and copying masks is an absolute nightmare and also slows down the program dramatically. The quality of the adjustments also lags behind Lightroom or Capture One as they don't seem to maintain the same color richness or depth. But then again there might be a dozen additional sliders that I'm not aware of I haven't set to the correct value in order to get the best results. Unlike Luminar, Darktable is rock stable, performant and has all the basic image sorting and filtering features you would want. At the same time, it also provides better color adjustments and of course much more control over colors than on one. This is an absolutely remarkable feat for a free open source program that manages to beat out two paid competitors in many essential areas. Now we finally come to the big guys of the industry. Unlike all the previous solutions, Capture One really focused on the basic features, performance and usability. And let me tell you, they did an absolutely splendid job of that. The user interface is a bit more cluttered, especially when compared to Lightroom CC, but each individual module is well structured and intuitive to use. And I want to bring special attention to the solution to the keyword filtering, which I personally found to be the most pleasant to use out of any of the programs. Unfortunately, the workflow isn't quite as streamlined as in Lightroom, and I found myself constantly switching in dialogues, whereas in Lightroom I can do most of the work in a single dialogue. Their no-nonsense approach leaves them with far fewer adjustment sliders than any of the other programs, but each and every one produces excellent results. I did find myself, however, longing for a texture and hazing slider occasionally. All of this professional goodness, of course, comes at an increased price point. The complete version with all styles runs you about 500 euros, and the basic versions without any styles 350. However, if you happen to be shooting on Fuji or Sony, you can get a special version that only supports RAW files from your camera for about 150 euros. They also provide student discounts, but only for the subscription model, which runs you about 8 euros 50 a month, which is still cheaper than Lightroom. And I haven't even mentioned all of the purchase options. And what's really important for me here is that they give you lots of options, so you can choose exactly what you want and pick out the parts that are important to you, and this feels like a fair pricing strategy. Which brings me to Lightroom, as their pricing strategy feels anything but fair. First they force you to rent Lightroom, and they force you to rent it for at least a year. This means they created a system that combines all the downsides of renting with all the downsides of buying. The second issue is that you cannot rent Lightroom by itself. You have to rent Lightroom alongside with Photoshop, or you have to rent it alongside with a terabyte of cloud storage. Both Photoshop and Cloud Storage are nice to have, but I'm not willing to pay for that. So if they would offer more purchase options that don't include all these extra features, that would feel much more like a fair offer. When actually using Lightroom, it becomes clear why it is the industry standard. It provides a very streamlined and intuitive interface, even more so with the new Lightroom CC. 
all of the sliders are very expressive, which allows you to get good results with fewer slider adjustments, making for a faster editing experience. But it does feel like Lightroom is lacking behind Capture One when it comes to colors. For example, when you do local adjustments, you have no access to the HSL sliders. On the other hand, their preset system seems to be quicker to use, and of course there are tons and tons of people making and selling presets for Lightroom, unlike Capture One. After all these tests, it seems that the old saying, you get what you pay for, still remains supreme. With the only exception being Capture One, in the cases where you use either Sony or Fuji, as you can save a lot of money with the discounted versions. Otherwise, both Capture One and Lightroom will cost you about 10 to 15 euros in the long run. For me, the biggest difference in price is that Lightroom forces your choice, whereas Capture One gives you a lot more purchasing options. The other contenders offer by far better prices, but each of them comes with their own deal breakers. And maybe they can outgrow their deal breakers and become some serious contenders for Lightroom or Capture One, but in their current condition, none of them can really keep up. So in the end, this was rather anticlimactic, as it seems to confirm the common intuition that everybody should start out with Lightroom. But at least you can now make a more informed decision when you choose to use Lightroom or some of its alternatives.